Good evening and welcome to the November 23rd, 2015 meeting of the Florissant City Council. As we begin this evening, I would ask you to stand and join the council in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Pagano? Here. Schmidt? Here. Siam? Here. Lee? Here. Egan? Here. Caputa? Here. Jones? Shuldroff? Here. Hankey? Here. Let the record reflect that a quorum is present this evening. Mr. Schmidt makes a motion to approve the meeting minutes for November 9th, 2015 and the budget meeting minutes for November 16th, 2015. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Let the record reflect that the meeting minutes have been approved. Next item on the agenda is hearing from citizens. If you would like to make a statement to the council, now is your time. I would ask that you complete a speaker's card located on the table next to the entrance of the chamber. Remember that this is not a question and answer period. If you have a question that you want personally answered, if you'll see myself or one of the council people after the meeting, we will be happy to oblige. Paul Young. Good evening, Mr. Young. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I would be appreciative. Yes, my name is Paul Young. Uh, my wife, Pat, and I reside at 525 Malanfi, the intersection of Patterson Road and Malanfi Lane here in Florissant. Very good, thank you very much, sir. You may begin. Okay, uh, not really a complaint. Good evening, Mayor Schneider. Uh, also, thank you for your service, and Jeff, too, for uh, your service for our country. Just people like you that we have our freedoms. Because I have an older brother who served in Vietnam. He was in the uh, 101st Airborne out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Take my hat off to you. <laughs> okay, this evening I just want to uh, speak again uh, about the traffic situation on Malanfi and the intersection of Malanfi Lane and Patterson Road. Uh, not a complaint, really, just I want to bring it to the mayor's attention uh, and police department's attention to, uh, you know, kind of keep an eye on it. I know it's busy, hard for them to keep an eye on everything, but they just seem to just nighttime, you know, just kind of drive a little faster than they should. Uh, also, I want to mention about that pavilion. Uh, is there any way they could uh, have s uh, some kind of sign posted where nobody can be in there at nighttime? Because I've noticed questionable characters, well, actually during daytime, too, questionable activity, suspicious personnel uh, doing suspicious things uh, daytime. I can't say for certain that it's a uh, illegal activity going on, but I, I used to be in law enforcement myself, and I was proud of it, and uh, I'm pretty sure I could see what's going on, but uh, it helped if they uh, kept, kept a closer eye on that. For some reason, they like to use that pavilion, suspicious characters, uh, people, the same ones go there all the time, and they do it during the daytime, uh, daytime hours. So if I just want to know if there's anything that can be done about, especially putting a sign up that's for you know, just for, uh, you can't, you know, be out there sleeping all day and doing questionable activity. Because uh, there's too many bad things going on in the world. And I, I don't want to see something bad happen to my house that's too close to the pavilion. I don't want to see something bad happen there. Yes, sir. And that's about it. All right, thank you, Mr. Young. I know that the chief is in attendance tonight, so I'm sure he heard that. I know the mayor made notes on those, both those items. Todd Sines, Todd Sines. Good evening, Mr. Sines. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Yes, my name is Todd Sines. I live at 1125 Boulder Drive, Florissant, Missouri. 
Uh, good evening. On this holiday season, I'm going to be Santa Claus for Shriners Hospital, uh, delivering Christmas gifts to the boys and girls. I'm asking for donations of new unwrapped toys. You may drop the new unwrapped toys off at the Florissant Police Department in the front lobby. Uh, money, money donations are always welcome. I'm also going to be Santa at the Garage Sale and Donation Center at 490 Hottershell Road, Florissant, Missouri, from 9 till noon on December the 12th. Uh, bring your little ones and your camera. Browse the store and please donate a new unwrapped toy for Mary Groves Christmas Angels. Money donations are welcome. Mary Groves is a place where children, youth, and families in need have found hope and healing. And don't forget you can donate to Shriners Hospital as well. Please donate new toys this holiday season, and God bless. Mr. Sines, can I go ahead and give your phone number out yes, in case good. someone will want to write it down and get a hold of you? Okay. It's 314-913-5616. Yes. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Have a great Thank evening. Thank you. Keith English. Good evening, Mr. English. You'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record. I'd be appreciative. Thank you, Mr. President. State Representative Keith English. Address is 470 South Castello. Uh, I have one thing before I get started. Uh, Mr. Egan, uh, Tom McCannoli said you left your hat there. So I did. <laughs> so they had dinner there. It was wonderful. In light of the recent political issues, like state auditor Tom Schweik and the negative political drama and games that surround that story. You would think that politicians would do the work of the people, not dig dirt, tell lies, or half-truths. Tonight I stand before you with support from my parents, friends, family, co-workers, supporters, Ward 9 residents, retired police officer Kirk Logas, my great attorney, Dr. Cabral, Kim Besserman, my campaign manager, and even my ex-wife. They may not be in presence, but I have something to leave with the clerk, and these are letters from these people that are not in attendance. As your state representative, father, stepfather, husband, grandpa, I want to share a very short summary of what's happened and transpired since 2014. And I pray it will satisfy the shark frenzy hatred that is sprung by one of the council members and his wife with their attorney that have been putting on Facebook the papers and around town. Why at the city council do you say do I stand before you with this? The attorney is an assistant prosecuting attorney. The councilman is here and I wanted to address everyone on these heartfelt issues. There was a lawsuit filed in 2014 for a mailer that went out about me in politics. Shortly after I filed a lawsuit for the defamation of character, it wasn't long that attorney's fees, court costs start to rack up. I did use campaign money originally to file the lawsuit and found out that we were not notified correctly or my campaign manager or treasurer were not notified properly. That money was paid back immediately within the guidelines of Missouri Ethics. I dropped my lawsuit after I spent nearly $7,000 to defend myself and my character and all the hard work I've done for the city and the state. The defendant did not drop the case, although, which disappoints me, and continued to do things like put letters across the state, emails across residents of the city, and I will briefly get into the letter of what it says. The letter from MoScout.com says, Becky Sharma emails supporters about the outcome of a lawsuit that Representative Keith English had filed against her and her. Mr. English, please. Let's let Mr. English, please be brief and please leave names out of Thank this, you. please. Thank you. About the hard-hitting mailer, Keith English unilaterally dismissed the lawsuit against her and her husband two months ago. It says here in the letter that 
In fact, I had to pay them $100 in sanctions for hindering the discovery process. Lawsuit under also uh, did the following. Mr. English was known in police reports in several counties and also used the N-word frequently to refer to African Americans in his own admissions. The judge did not seal this information and will be released quickly. In the Mr. Future. English, please wrap it up with this. I'm, I am Thank failing you. to see a connection with it. I have a letter here that I would like to leave for the record from my ex-wife. That we can do? Pardon me? That you can do, yes. Pardon me? Yes, you, you can do that. Yes, I will. Um, I also have a letter from my doctor, and I wish to get into that. It was stated on Facebook that I had made claims as a city councilman that I had cancer. And I would like to read this letter, please. If you could be, be very, very brief, because I'm not seeing I'm a connection using to my city three business. Very wisely here. Thank you. The above named patient, to whom it may concern, the above named patient, Keith English, date of birth 11 4, 1967, was diagnosed with a tumor on the prostate in 2007. The tumor was surgically removed and biopsied, although initially thought to be malignant, it was in fact reported to be benign tumor. Since 2009, the patient continues to be treated for benign prostate hypertrophy. Respectfully, Galileo Cabriol, medical doctor. Thank you, Mr. English. You're welcome. In 2007. Mr. English, we really got to wrap this up. This really, I'm not seeing any How many minutes do I have, sir? You've, you've passed three minutes, two minutes okay. ago. You're at five minutes, sir. You know, I, I think it, it's probably better. You've made your statement, and um, thank you. And I would appreciate if you go ahead and take your seat. Pardon me. Would you Would you go ahead and take your seat, Mr. English? Yes. In closing, that after my announcing that not running for re-election, this is no way to announce that either my opponent or past opponent is running for the 68th district by defaming my character. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. English. Thank you. Kevin O'Donnell. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd appreciate it. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane, Florissant, Missouri, 63031. I'm here to speak on behalf of Mr. English. Mr. Mr. O'Donnell, I don't see what that has anything to do with city business. It does have anything to do with city business because... I'll this, let you continue, I'll, I'll, but be understanding if, if you get into a name calling, I'm no, going to cut you I'm off. No, I'm not going to get a name calling. I'm okay. just saying what, just the facts. I don't understand what it has to do with okay. that, but I'll give you leeway. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, you were not on council. In fact, I'm not even sure if you even knew you were going to run for council at the time when Mr. English had brought this up when he was on the dais. He was sitting over there in the seat where Mr. Caput is sitting, and he had announced that he did, ha that he did have cancer, or prostate cancer. He also, if, if anybody that's on the council right now, which is only three of you at the time, he announced that he, was, uh, wor he worked through Seidman Cancer Hospital, and he arranged to have uh, prostate cancer screenings for not only this the city employees of Florissant, but for all Florissant, male Florissant members, residents. And, and this was not any kind of showboating because he's, he had a lot of fundraising that was done on this. And, and for somebody that, has, that may not have even been in our city at the time to bring up the fact that things that he doesn't even know for sure I know, I was here. I've been at these council meetings for 10 years. And I just, uh, I'm here to, to stand up for Mr. English tonight because I'm an administrator of a, a group on Facebook and I've seen nothing but slander and uh, are written violations on there, disposing, trying to degrade him and I, I don't, tolerate this. I don't do like you do, or I, can't, I shut you up. I let people speak because I believe in freedom of speech, First Amendment, freedom of speech, and f freedom of uh, any type of expression that they have. 
So that's why I'm here this evening. And I would like to say that on, on, in response for myself, in 2014, there were emails sent out from me when I was running for council from the councilman that was mentioned. And he put, spread word that I was doing nothing but sabotaging his wife's uh, run for, for state representative of the 68th district. That's all I have to say this evening. And thank you for letting me speak, Mr. Egan. And thank you, Mr. O'Dell. Next person I have a card is Charles LaShaw. Mr. LaShaw, I believe that you're scheduled for a public hearing, so if you just want to wait for a few minutes, we'll have you then. Next item on the agenda is communications. Letter dated November 6, 2015 from Rose Marie Boucher regarding breed-specific legislation. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is public hearings. Public hearing 151025, I would make a motion to resume the public hearing. And that's seconded by Ms. Pagano. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is the petitioner president, Mr. Marco Felix? Mr. Felix, are you present this evening or one of your representatives? Ms. Pagano. Yes, it's come to my attention that there has been contact with Mr. Felix. Um, I would like to postpone one more time to the December 14th meeting so we can get a hold of him. Ms. Pagano makes a motion to postpone the public hearing. As second, prior to accepting the postponement, I would ask that if there's anyone in the audience that has any had come to make comment on this and would like to do so, now is an opportunity to do so. Uh, seeing none, you, sir. If you'll state your name and address for the record. How you doing, Mr. Egan? Yes, and your name, sir? My name is Cedric Redmond. And your address? 3163 Santiago Drive. Okay, and you're more than welcome to speak about the public hearing. Well, first of all, what I would like to say is not only do I love St. Louis and I love the city of Florissant, but... Um, Racism is one of those things that uh, we have to destroy that thought. We have to destroy the thought of that. Um, I'm here for my friend Keith. Um, not only is he my state representative, he's also my sir, friend. Sir, this is a public hearing on this is a public hearing uh, on a Mexican restaurant. Okay. This is um, unfortunately not the time to talk about Mr. English or racism and. Uh, real or perceived in, in the city of Florida Center, city of St. Louis. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Okay, I apologize. But if you come back next time, you'll have the opportunity to public hearing, okay? Or at the public citizen's comment. Is there anyone who would like to comment on the public hearing regarding Rubio's Fresh Mexican Grill? There's a motion on the floor to postpone, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the meeting shall be postponed until December 14th, 2015. Next item on the agenda, public hearing 151127. In accordance with section 405.310 of the Florissant Zoning Code, a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florissant, Missouri in the Council Chambers, 955 Rue St. Francois on Monday, November 23rd at 7 p.m. 30 p.m. on the following proposition to it. To authorize a special use permit to Charles Lashi, DBA Glory to God Kingdom Fellowship Hall to allow for the operation of a child daycare center for the property located at 8428 North Lindbergh. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Lashi, I believe, is in the audience. If you'd come forward now, sir. Uh, thank you. Good evening, sir. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Good evening. My name is Charles Lashe, L-A-W-S-H-E, with an accent. 
Amen. Lachey. If you'll, if you'll Amen. speak up, Mr. Lachey. Uh, if it you'll, happens you'll, a lot. I just want to make sure for the record it's correct. If you'll uh, point that microphone in your face there. There you go. And okay. speak real loud like I do. I'd yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank I you. Was, I've got a picture of trouble. I live at 3038 Wood Poppy Drive, Royston, Missouri. And I'm the pastor of Glory to God Kingdom Fellowship. We're not a hallway church. So that needs to be corrected in a minute. Okay. Uh, for the most part, I just want to be here and represent what it is I stand for, for the daycare and for the church to help bless the community and be a part of anything that we can do to make things better. Uh, you want to go ahead and tell the council a little bit about your project that you're proposing? Um, we've been in Florida coming up on seven years, and we want to move to get the larger space. And in that vision, we want to open up an infant toddler center to bless the young people and the children. One thing that our young people need is love and care, not just babysitting and the things of that nature. That's fine, but they need to be encouraged no matter who they are and where they come from. And as a man of God, I believe that all people have the opportunity to do so. <clears throat> so we want to open up an infant toddler center and move to a larger space to enlarge our space for congregation. Where are you currently uh, located at now, sir? 8460 North Lindbergh. I believe that's where you want to go, correct? No, that's where we are. We want to move to 8428. 8428. Yes, sir. And that's the uh, medical supply place, yes, sir, right? Yes, the medical equipment bill. Okay. You, you know, I'm the councilman from that ward, and I got a couple questions about the project. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, what hours would you be operating the daycare center? Let's start with the daycare um, center. I had my hours set from 6 to 6, but at the encouraging of the zoning commission, they said make them from 5 to 7 to allow for any time restraints or you no know, freedoms at that point. Uh, the daycare is not open at the same time that the church is having service. They're, they're, though we will be the operator of it, they won't be operating at the same time. And, and on, in your uh, plan for the daycare center, is that going to be seven days a week, Monday through Friday? Yes, sir, Monday through Friday. And so you're, you're, although you've asked for five to seven, you're planning on opening from six to six? Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, my concerns are this, and, and I went by the property to view it, and it's in my ward. Yes, sir. Uh, on your diagram, you indicate that there is a, a building that I guess is an outbuilding. Yes, sir. That's uh, there now. Yeah, and, yes, you, and you indicate that that's an unoccupied. Yes, sir. By the landlord, we don't occupy that building. It's occupied right. by someone else. Yeah, it, it isn't. It's they're running a business out of it, correct? Uh, no, there's nothing there. The uh, owner, Mr. Keevan uses that building for what he calls extra storage. So there's nothing actually there. Yeah, uh, we're talking about the building directly behind. Directly behind where we want to move, yes, sir. It, I went by there today, and to be candid with you, there's four or five really big tree um, trimming Yes, sir, they parked those trucks, trucks there, but they're not operating out of that building. So that they're not correct. operating a business, but they're operating their trucks out of there. Uh, others, based on, from what I know, uh, they're just using them for parking. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't have any control or any other knowledge than that about those, that and, building and those trucks. And, and my big concern is by looking at the plans here, uh, the, behind that building is really a, um, a driveway. I mean, more or less at this it's point, a driveway, yes. yes. I mean, yes, uh, it, it connects the businesses to the uh, north of there. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm assuming deliveries come for uh, the Domino's and the different businesses. Deliveries come from the rear. Yes, sir. I That's guess one of how, the ways in, yes. Uh, how big is this, um, the play area going to be? It's by state requirements. It, it doesn't have to be more than eight to 900 square feet. Okay. And we're having it fixed where it has the pylons made out of cast iron and concrete that will actually encompass the parameters and the circumference of the playground. And plus, it'll have a fence six foot high <clears throat> to keep the children safe. Uh, very good. And, and what's the actual dimensions of that? Because again, I went back um, there today. And I'm, it'll go from the building out about 15 feet and then across by another maybe 30, 35, 40 feet. All the way, like half of the size of the building. Okay. And I'm, I'm just gonna let you know that that's my only concern is, yes, sir. is that play area. I, I know that there between the building, there's like an alleyway. Yes, sir. And there's well, some, yeah, it is. They, it's fenced off right now, but yes. Well, there's well, it's not really fenced off. It should right. be, but <laughs> the fence is down on the side. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what? I, if you could get a hold of me this week, absolutely. Um, uh, during the week, and maybe we could meet up there and talk about my concerns. Yes, sir. This is just a public hearing. I'm just letting you know right now. I, I will be checking with uh, planning and zoning because I, I'm really concerned about 
putting children in, in, in a driveway. As I, same okay. thing, sir. So we have similar concern on yes, that. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Schmidt. Uh, thank you. Uh, obviously, you don't have a study of your own plans with you. Uh, yes, sir, I do, but what do you want to ask about? I've got to well, remember. Well, could you that. explain to me how your, how the drop off and pick off of these children is going to work in the parking lot? In the front parking lot. In the front parking lot. Yes, sir. So they're going to come right through the front door. Yes, sir. So you're going to have people pulling straight into the building the way your, the parking straight spots the, are. Straight into the parking spots. Let kids off. So you're going to have kids being dropped off, cars backing out, pulling in and backing out. Of that parking now, lot in front. <laughs> that's not a good combo. Um, I had a, I've had some experience with some a, um, a child daycare care center in a shopping center type atmosphere mm -hmm. and it was literally a nightmare um, uh, well, over my I, ward. Uh, this, we had to do a, um, we had to do a lot of different things uh, in order to get a safe pathway for the kids to be dropped off in the mornings uh, actually we ended up coming up with an idea of a u-shaped actually a circular drive in the front of the building in so that the kids could be dropped off safely uh, there is no through traffic other than going to the side of the building and around. <clears throat> that is a standalone building separated by uh, uh, land between us and the strip mall. Well, I understand that the flow of the tra that there's no through traffic. That I understand. I'm just more concerned about cars being pulling in, parking, dropping their kids off, and backing out while their cars are trying to pull in and dropping kids off. You got kids running in the parking lot while they you got cars moving lot. around. Children that we have are from newborn to three years old, so there won't be any running on the parking lot. So three year old is gonna be your yes, oldest. Yes, sir, that's our maximum, three years old. There's then no toddlers then, running around and things of that nature. It's not that type of daycare. Yeah. Mr. Lee. Yeah, I'm done then. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um yes, sir. I, I had some questions. I read the planning and zoning minutes and I'm a little bit confused. Your proposal here tonight is to operate the daycare center. Say again, sir. The proposal here tonight is for the operation of the daycare center, correct? Yes, especially but in the plans, it shows um, it shows you're also planning on moving your church congregation there as well. Yes, sir. Okay. In the planning and zoning minutes, and I want to double check the requirements. Um, it indicated in there that the seating for 112, um, and then the daycare center classrooms. And it said that the required parking spaces are 107, but there's only 28 parking spaces. So I'm well, based on what I understand with state requirements, also the uh, county requirements uh, is four to five people per car. So I if you take the amount of parking spaces and multiply by that number, you come out with it should be 104 to 107. All right. If there's only 28 parking spaces there, and, and I'm looking for clarification planning and or the the uh, the staff report shows that it requires 107 parking spaces for the for the uh, for what's being proposed and that's why I'm confused well, parking is for the ch for this church not for the daycare I, I, I understand so yes, if there's sir. if there's not enough parking spaces then I I'm kind of curious as to what we're going to do because you're basically asking for, Mr. Hessel would be correct, they're asking for a variance on the parking requirements if... I'm not familiar, Tim, whether or not they have obtained a variance, whether or not it's been requested or what the status of that is. I, like you, saw the <coughs> okay. staff analysis from yeah, planning I'm, and zoning. I'm, yeah, I'm going from the staff analysis as well. So I, I just think we need to clarify that. And I, Mr. Egan, I know you're going to look into it further. It's in your ward, but that that is one of my concerns. I share Mr. Schmidt's concerns about ingress and egress at drop-off times and so forth, but I'm, I'm also as equally concerned about if we're gonna have seating for 112 people and only have 28 parking spaces, I don't think that meets our requirement as far as I can. Well, as I said, it's based on how many people per car, not one person per car. Well, I understand, but, I, yes, but our, our ordinance is specific and it's based upon square footage, I believe, Mr. Hessel. Square footage of, of the church, you mean? Yeah. That's what my architect followed, that and the requirements of that part. It's a fair, it is based upon not. square footage as well as use. Yes. It, and, Kenley, I'm having difficulty understanding how you could get to 107. I, well, That's I, an awful, no, I, I'm reading it as you I, are. Yeah, I didn't think 107 was, a, was correct, but I also didn't think that 28 would be for 
for a multi-use property. And I'm also curious if the outbuilding, which is currently unoccupied but leased, I would assume that some of those parking spaces are allocated for the, for the use of that building as well. So I would like further clarification from, from staff and, and on what we would actually require for parking spaces for that right. before we proceed. So okay. that's all I have right now. Mr. Lachey, what we'll do is perhaps unite and get together this week and we can clarify with planning and zoning before okay. we move along. Again, I, I did have my concerns up there, okay. um, especially with the playground being in and, and what it essentially is a driveway. Right, at this point, yes, sir. And so um, uh, we, will, uh, we will follow up on this. I'll make sure um, uh, I'm reachable. I'll make sure if you stay here after the meeting, I'll give you my business card, my phone number. Fair okay. enough? That'd be great. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone present that would like to make comment? Mr. Chairman, I would recommend that you not close the public hearing because of the issues associated okay. with the parking requirements. That needs to be addressed within the public hearing context. Good enough. Then, then I'll make the motion to continue okay. the uh, public hearing until December, December. Right, 14th. Right. That way they'll give us time to clarify the issues that brought up by myself, Mr. Schmidt, yes, and Mr. Lee. Fair enough? Okay. I'll make the motion to continue, and that's seconded by Mr. Hanke. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And I'll, I'll call you. Very good. All right. <laughs> Next item on the agenda. Old business, bills for second reading. Substitute bill 9137, I'll make a motion to accept the substitute bill that is seconded by Mr. Shildroff. Is there any discussion? All in favor, Mr. All in favor, aye. Oppose? The second bill will be accepted. I will also make a motion for a second reading of the bill that is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Ms. Pagano. Yes, after um, going through this again this weekend, um, it came to my attention that on one of the, uh, the human, human resource um, department, housing, I'm sorry, housing department, um, we went from a vacant full-time position and moved that to a part-time. Looking at this, the job classification, I just want clarification that why did the gl job classification change? Um, we voted seven to two to do this, and um, uh, I don't understand why it was changed. On November 9th, um, I'm sorry, we had the full-time employee making $16.47 an hour at a full-time rate. When we pulled it down to a part-time, I would assume that the that changed. Now I have it down as a secretarial position, and I don't know when the job description changed or what when we moved to part-time. I just want clarification. Can you clarify that? Your Honor? Yeah, I don't think we, we didn't have a uh, classification to uh, fit that slide into, so we just went, went, went with the closest spot that we could in our, in our part-time classifications. Would the job description not stay the same? I mean, if we, if we took that full time, wouldn't the part-time be doing the same thing as they would have been doing if they were at full-time status? We'd have to review that with the personnel commission and probably come up with a new job description before we would fill it. That that position probably won't be filled until we've until we've uh, until we decided on on whether that should be clerical or if it should be field. Okay, so if 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 we're voting on on this and and what I voted for in the budget meeting, that's. Uh, I'm just, I just don't think 
that bringing it down to a secretary is what I had in mind when I voted just to move her to part time. M Mr. Hankey. <clears throat> I think what happened here, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, when the vote was taken on this to reduce the position from a full time to a part time position, I don't think it was anyone's intention to also at that time reduce the job description. The job's going to stay the same, they're just doing it part time now. I don't think it was anyone's intention to reduce the actual job duties or description from the job. They're going to be doing the same thing that they were doing the full time, they're just going to be doing it part time. So I think it was inadvertent, there was like a double, uh, a double circumstance that happened here. One was the elimination of the full time creation of a part time, but also in this budget, and it was pointed out, that the pay was drastically reduced and, and the job description was. And I don't think, I think those are separate issues and I think we need to address mm -hmm. that second issue of the job description and the pay. Uh, we, the vote that we took was addressing the full time to part time issue. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a double, there was not two things embedded in that, in that proposal, in that vote. We voted on the reduction in the, in the position, uh, I think with the assumption that the pay and the, and the job would stay the same. Yeah, if this um, question would have uh, came up or earlier, we, we probably would have an answer for you tonight. Uh, I don't think it would be that difficult for us to uh, come up with a different job description and we might have a minor uh, adjustment to the, uh, to the pay. We don't have a part-time position that's going to fit that description at the moment. Uh, we didn't know what the will of the council was going to be, so it's kind of like which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Mr. Lee? I, I'm, I'm reading the, uh, the recommendation from administration that, that brought this to the floor during the work session, and it was to eliminate one full-time administrative assistant position and add one part-time secretary position. That was in the request, that was in the motion, and the, and the numbers salary-wise support, support what, that, what the recommendation was. I, I have no problem with administration and personnel uh, designing a job description, and if they later determine that the job description should be somewhat different or the duties would be different, I wouldn't mind coming back. But that was in the recommendation um, from administration that we voted on. It specifically said from one full-time uh, to a part-time secretary position. Ms. Pagano. Yes, so well, looking at the minutes, and if I remember the, d the discussion on it, because I know the salary committee did go um, and actually wanted to keep that as a full-time position, and then when we went with the administration's um, recommendation to bring it to part-time, I don't think anywhere in that conversation or in the minutes that I have that the classification of the job was going to change. Um, that's, that's the problem that I have. I, I, I never remember that in, in a conversation or anything that the classification was going to go from an administrative assistant to a secretary. So that's, that's where I'm having problems. And had I have, I have all this, I was looking at it this weekend, I didn't mean to spring it on you tonight. I didn't, it just sort of got here and it's well, Monday. From a budget standpoint, it probably uh, isn't gonna make that much difference. Uh, the administration's aware of the challenge uh, to try to uh, uh, fill that position with the type of person that could f uh, be consistent with the mission of the community development office. Uh, but until we knew what the will of the council was going to be, we, we, didn't, we didn't do any further work on that adjustment. We'll be glad to do that before we fill it. Mr. Hankey. Okay. Hopefully I'm not out of order here, but I don't know if a motion would be in order uh, for that the will of the council is to revisit the job description and the salary of this position. I think we are all on the same page. Well, maybe we're not all on the same page, but I think pretty much the will is that this was an inadvertent mistake in here that we want to fix it. And if we got to fix it tonight, can uh, we just have a maybe a, make a motion that we, what the will of the council would be on this job description? I don't, I don't think it's, that's proper, but okay. I, I think Mr. Hustle. Procedurally, th that's not an appropriate motion with respect to this bill. Now, obviously, the dialogue takes place. It's not uncommon, Mr. Hankey, right. to express that desire to the administration. And I just heard the administration say that he recognizes that's what okay. you and 
Ms. Pagano want to do, and the administration will bring it back to you. So, but again, that's not directly related to the bill that's on the floor. I didn't know if we had to officialize it. <laughs> the, the minutes will certainly reflect the discussion. That's okay. correct. Seeing no other discussion on this, Ms. Pagano makes a motion for a second reading. That is seconded by Mr. Schildroff. Any Yeah, she hasn't. But you had the motion yeah. in the second. We have. We, I don't believe we've. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm Lauren Stocking, the budget of the City of Florissant for fiscal year commencing December 1, 2015, and ending on November 30th, 2016, and providing for its effective date. All right, Mr. Schmidt makes a motion for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Hankey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. An ordinance adopting the budget for the City of Florissant for fiscal year commencing on December 1, 2015 and ending on November 30th, 2016 and providing for its effective date. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Good afternoon, sir. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for record, I appreciate it. Hold on, please. Now you're on. Go ahead. I bring for you tonight with a word that says earlier in the conversation said mission. I didn't realize the city of Florida had a mission statement. And I know the police department has it mounted on their wall. But here, I don't know that we had a mission statement at all. With the social media as it is, I was advised to check in to other communities in terms of their budget and their process. Because often the city council refers to other cities and municipalities as a guideline for our city. And yet the other hand of it is, is that I was confronted by several individuals telling me that we're not Hazelwood. And I know that. I can spell the word well. Tonight I come before you again in terms of the budget. In the budget, particularly in the administration budget, what's the difference between a used car, a used car and a pre-owned car? That's wordsmithing, and you've heard me talk about that before. In the administration's budget, and I don't have, I can tell you the page that I have, it's page 17 of the budget as it was presented. I could not pull up the budget as it is presented tonight. I could not find it in terms of the details information. The operating statement for no October has not been posted on the internet. And I know that's done as a courtesy, as I was told by the city clerk's office. But on page 17, legislative consulting services, Missouri legislator, $24,000. Why do we call that our lobbyist? Because we would like to just smooth that over. There was no discussion whatsoever in any of the budget work sessions that I was aware of about hiring and, and again, hiring a lobbyist, which by the way, has been Tim Green former senator from North County who now lives in St. Charles County, who sits on a TIF commission, what I understood, in St. Charles County. Now, I don't know how that we need a lobbyist when in fact we have a municipal league and we pay dues for that. We also have dues for the North County Inc., which we pay for dues for that. Why do we need a $24,000 lobbyist? Because of the Missouri legislators, when we have our legislators here, both our uh, districts, and our senator, which is Gina Walsh. I don't understand that. And I think that's a scam to me as a taxpayer, as a citizen of this, res of this city, and you as a city council with your fiduciary responsibility has dropped it. And I'm disappointed in the, in the city council in terms of reviewing the budget. I was interrupted uh, several weeks ago in a hallway uh, by the administration when I was confronted uh, by the administration, when I was talking to Mr. Lester about professional fees on page 67 of the budget, mailing costs for Florence and Focus, 1,500, five issues, postage for five issues of the Florence and Focus at $4,250. That's only pre professional fees. And again, I've come before you before, and I've talked about classifications of expenditures. This is a hidden gesture on behalf of the administration, call it like it is. And I tried to, to talk to Mr. Lester about it, 
and that's when I was, uh, when Mr. Lester was discharged by the administration, not giving me an opportunity to speak to an employee as a citizen, just trying to clarify the budget. I thought that was wrong. I'm here tonight to object to that. Also, on the budget, on the budget workshop, a, present, a presentation was made by Tim Lee about the Florissant Golf Course. We owe on the bonds for the golf course till 2017. According to the projections, as we have it in here on October 16th of the Golf Course Committee, subcommittee, we're going to lose approximately $428,000. Lose, again, $428,000. And yet, other communities, which are close to the city of Larson, offer leaf picking up, tree limb shredding programs, and that's for the citizens. And again, a golf course is an amenity, what Mr. Keith Shouldroff told me many years ago. It's an amenity. But so is tree limb shredding, shredding. So is leaf picking up. It helps MSD in terms of the waterways and their sewers. And yet, Belfort Neighbors has a program, and we have Calverton Park with a program, a much smaller city than us, and we don't give our citizens what we deserve. $428,000 loss, and our projection in terms of the bonds are to be paid off by 2017. If we do not open the golf course up this year, we could save ourselves a substantial amount of money, even though the bonds are not paid. But they're going to be paid off in 2017. This is what I'm, I'm objecting to. You've heard me and what Mr. Egan said. I rant on the golf course. I don't rant. What I do is try to find out the logic behind this expenditure over and over and over again. 2015 budget, as it's projected, is $299,568 loss. Year to date for 2015, $3,442 loss. 2014, $682,000 loss. 2013, $343,000 loss. 2012, $261,000, and it goes on and on and on. The golf course is a great amenity, but can we financially afford it when we can't offer other services to our citizens and to better our community? Why don't we set up a subcommittee, Mr. Egan, on charter review? Why don't we set up a subcommittee on other things that concern the citizens, like real estate, the depression of our real estate not going up but remaining flat. Why don't we set up a subcommittee and, and appropriate money for that through the housing program? I come before you tonight with a simple request, do it right. I've talked on social media, media about all of you being puppets to the administration, and I really mean that. I thought there was backbone in this legislation of the city council, and what I found is failure to communicate and to understand a budget. Two work sessions for this budget is not satisfactory. The annual budget, as it goes through the process, every month an operating statement is given. The city council chooses not to have a meeting every month on a $31 million business. And I find that to be shocking. We had two meetings this year. One was mid-season, where it was talked about utility tax. And Mr. Lee brought that up to reduce the utility tax, and he didn't receive a second on his motion to reduce utility taxes, which I think the citizens of Florissant deserve. We are currently, I believe, at a 7% utility tax. We do sit down to four. That's what I asked for, and I didn't get it. I don't expect to get everything I want, but yet this administration continues to spend money foolishly. Save that $24,000. We don't need the lobbyists there. Going back to the administration side of it is, when you turn your pages back to administration, you have the same thing there on page 18. Page 18, the bottom of the page, Metro Mayors of St. Louis. How does that benefit us directly? How does that, when we belong to the Municipal League, when we have legislators representing our citizens and our city, and then one right below that, Engineer Club of St. Louis. Explain to me how that is going to affect me as a citizen. Now, I can understand Mr. Barrett, Lou Gerald's being part of the engineer, but the administration, that's I mean, it's only a couple of dollars, but at $140,000 a year salary for this mayor, he can't afford that, $190? <laughs> it's almost shameful. And you, the city council, bought into it. As I conclude this evening, I will stay with it. I will stand alone in most cases. 
I will not bend, and I will still be here. It's disappointing not to see the city council act in a responsible judiciary way and doing the right thing. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to make comment before a final vote is taken? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you be so kind as to poll the council? Pagano. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Siam. Yes. Lee. Yes. Egan. Yes. Caputa. Yes. Shouldra. Yes. Hank. Yes. Passes and becomes ordinance 8180-8180. Bill 9138. Mr. Shildroff makes a motion for a second reading that is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. An ordinance amending Chapter 240 Emergency Management, Subsection 24010, Establishment of the Florissant City Code by adding a provision for temporary commissioner. Mr. Cyan makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? Not seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. An ordinance amending Chapter 240, Emergency Management, Subsection 24010, Establishment of the Florissant City Code by adding a provision for a temporary commissioner. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldra? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Bill number 9138 passes and becomes ordinance 8181. I will make a motion to accept substitute bill 9139 and that is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Is there any discussion on the substitute bill? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I will now make a motion for a second reading of, of Bill 9139. That would be seconded by Mr. Henke. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Please read the bill for a second time. An ordinance repealing Ordinance 7929, 7966, establishing a new compensation plan for part-time employees of the City of Florissant and containing an effective date clause. Ms. Pagano makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Shildroff. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. An ordinance repealing ordinance 7929 and 7966, establishing a new compensation plan for part-time employees of the city of Florissant and containing an effective date clause. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Bill 9139 passes and becomes ordinance 8182. 8182. Bill 9140. Mr. Hanky makes a motion for a second reading of Bill. 9140, that is seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bill for a second time. Ordinance repealing ordinance number 7928, 8106, and 8014, which established the compensation plan for the seasonal part-time employees of the city of Florissant and, and containing an effective date clause. Mr. Sam makes a motion for a third reading that is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. An ordinance repealing ordinance 7928, 8106, and 8014, which established the compensation plan for seasonal part-time employees of the city of Florissant and containing an effective date clause. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment? 
Is seen on Madam Clerk, please pull the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldruff? Yes. Hinky. Bill 9140 passes and becomes ordinance 8183-8183. Ms. Pagano makes a motion to accept substitute bill 9141. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Cyan makes a motion for a second reading of bill 9141. That is seconded by Mr. Shildroff. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill a second time. Ordinance authorizing a transfer of $20,000 from account number 4055, insurance, fire, and liability, to account 4023, postage and printing, to cover anticipated shortfall in postage for the balance of the fiscal year. Mr. Schmidt makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. Ordinance authorizing a transfer of $20,000 from account number 4055, insurance, fire, and liability, to account number 4023, postage and printing, to cover anticipated shortfall in postage for the balance of the fiscal year. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? If you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I would be appreciative. Mayor of 1281 Graham Road, floors. Bill 4191, it originally started out to be $20,000, and I thought the subject bill was $15,000. So which one is correct, $15,000 or $20,000? Follow-up question to that is that where in the budget is postage and printing? I tried to find it in terms of administration. I tried to locate it in the September monthly operating report to determine the actual cost so far this year. October has not been posted on the website, even though today is November 23rd. We have seven days left in this fiscal year. November 30th ends it. And we've got 15,000 or 20,000 appropriated for postage and printing. That's $3,000 a day. What are we spending the money for? I cannot find it. Underneath the Freedom of Information Act, I'm going to request a complete detailed summary of where these expenditures were because you, the city council, sit there and do not know what's going on. And why? You know, there's, there's what they call a chicken farm. And what do you have on chicken farms? You know, I'm ashamed of all of you for not questioning this, this expenditure. Why, what has gone on? Why the $20,000? Why the $15,000? Can you, Mr. Egan, the president of this council, give me any explanation? This is not the, the hearing from citizens where I can't ask a question. I'd like to ask a question. What is this expenditure for? You continue making your statement if you'd like, Mr. Engelmar. I'm waiting for an answer, Mr. I'm Egan. I'm giving you an answer at this point. Tab, you want to You're the president of the account. council. I'm a citizen. Don't I deserve an answer? If you want to answer, I'll speak to you after the meeting. No, I'd like the public to know our conversation so we're not hidden behind a wall or in a hallway. This is a public meeting. Answer the question. I came before you tonight with a question, and we get no response, none. Disappointing in this administration and the city council. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Is there anyone else that'd like to make comment? Gave me, sir, if you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Branch O Lane. I had the same question because I noticed that uh, couple, that last meeting, I think there was a $15,000 shortfall. And this year, there's, uh, there's another uh, shortfall of $20,000. And this was on there once before about taking it out of the you know, swapping it out of an account. We've got seven days, like Mr. Engelmeyer just stated, we have seven days remaining in this fiscal year. Is that, does that mean that it cost, that it cost two hundred, it cost eighty thousand dollars for postage for one month? I don't understand. 
if, if it's a shortfall for anticipated fees, which I read on the memo, I'd just like to know where, what are the anticipated fees coming from? Is this for the, for the mailings for the Prop S for, uh, flyers that went out? I don't know what it's for. Is it for other mailings? I'm sure it's not for the mailings uh, of, uh, of the uh, focus or it shouldn't be, but I was just curious, and I know I'm not gonna get an answer because living up to the tradition of this uh, council for the last 15 years, since Jim Egan passed away, we don't have public answers that you have to, t I have to talk to an individual. But uh, I, I just thought I'd ask anyway, just in case you were wondering, but you know, I'm sitting here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Seeing none, clerk, will you please poll the council? Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputo? Yes. Shoulder? Yes. Thank you. And becomes ordinance 8184, 8184. <coughs> Mr. Schilderop makes a motion to accept substitute bill 9142. That is seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the substitute bill? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Caputo makes a motion for a second reading of. 9142, that is seconded by Mr. Siam. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. Ordinance to amend Title II, Chapter 245, Parks and Recreation of the Florissant City Code, Section 245-180, Fees for Use, by deleting the section in its entirety and replacing it with a new section. Mr. Lee makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by, my, by myself. Is there any discussion? All in favor of third reading, aye. aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. Ordinance to amend Title II, Chapter 245, Parks and Recreation of the Florissant City Code, Section 245-180, Fees for Use, by deleting the section in its entirety and replacing it with a new section. Prior to final vote being taken on this motion, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputo? Yes. Shuldrock? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bill 9142 passes and becomes ordinance 8185-8185. No, right. Next on the agenda, new business. Board appointments. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, appoint Ms. Uh, Mary Wallace from Ward 6 to the Environmental Quality Commission. I will make that, that motion for that appointment. That is seconded by Mr. Shuldroff. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the appointment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the appointment will carry. Any additional? Thank you, sir. Bill sir, first reading, I will make a motion to remove bill number 9143 from the agenda uh, due to the fact that we have postponed the public hearing and that is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion, the agenda shall be adjusted to remove 9143 from today's agenda. Bill 9144. An ordinance submitting to the qualified voters of the city of Florissant, Missouri for their approval at the general municipal election to be held in the city on the fifth day of April, 2016, a, pro a proposition to authorize the city to continue applying and collecting the local sales tax 
on the titling of motor vehicles, trailers, boats, and outboard motors that were purchased from a source other than a licensed Missouri dealer. Bill number 9145. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Florissant to enter into a supplemental agreement for federal funding for project number STP 5595614, known as the North Lafayette Street Reconstruction Project. I will make a motion for a second reading, and that is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Uh, first or the second? I beg your pardon? I'll first read the second. Okay. okay An ordinance the Florissant to enter into a supplemental agreement for federal funding for project number STP 5595614, known as the North Lafayette Street Reconstruction Project. A motion for a third reading. Seconded by Ms. Pagano. Any discussion? Roll call vote for a third reading, please. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. And Hanke? Yes. Please read the bill for a third time. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Florissant to enter into a supplemental agreement for federal funding for project numbers STP 5595614, known as the North Lafayette Street Reconstruction Project. Prior to final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment? Is seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky. Yes. Bill 9145 passes and becomes ordinance 8186, 8186. Bill 9147. C correction, 9146, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, an ordinance authorizing appropriation of $16,000 from the General Revenue Fund to account number 0610 salaries golf course and an appropriation of 1500 to account number 0626 utilities golf for the end of the year balancing for the golf course. Mr. Schildoff, make a motion for second reading as seconded by Mr. Caputo. Any discussion? Mr. Lee? <coughs> yes, sir. I just want to again say that uh, we worked very hard on the golf course. We've made lots and lots of adjustments for next year. This is an unforeseen expense that I don't think anyone is happy about appropriating at the last minute in this case, uh, but it's necessary to get through the, the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to go on record as saying this, and I know the mayor will concur with me, this is not going to happen next year. Um, we're going to have a lot tighter control on things, and I, I trust I see Mr. Schmidt sitting back there. Um, that will be on the hot seat if it if it doesn't happen. But uh, I will be supporting it tonight with that caveat that um, we've made significant changes to prevent this from happening again. So that's all I got. Thank you. All in favor of second reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. An ordinance authorizing the appropriation of 16000 from the General Revenue Fund to account 0610 salaries golf course and an appropriation of 1500 to account number 0626 utilities golf for the end of the year balancing for the golf course. Mr. Lee makes a motion for a third reading that is seconded by Mr. Henke. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please, for a third reading. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Appropriation of 16000 from the General Revenue Fund to account number 0610, salaries golf course, and an appropriation of 1500 to account number 0626, utilities golf, for the end of the year balancing for the golf course. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? So if you please so, so kind as to state your name and your address for the record. Michael Meyer, 1281 Graham Road, Florissant. You may proceed, sir. On this item, 9146, it's got an emergency bill, so it's going to have to be a roll call vote. But, uh, Mr. Lee, I want to thank you for your explanation and understanding in terms of the golf course. Even though I have issues concerning the golf course, as you've heard me speak before, this is a necessary uh, year-end balancing for the golf course. You said it was unintentional, and I take your word at that. But at the same time, underneath the election expenses, there was no anticipation of any election for next year in the budget workshops. So at this point here, I hope you're true to your word, and I, 
I really, Todd Schmidt back there, sitting there, he's going to be put on the hot seat. I, I know he'll do a good job, and hopefully this will not happen, and it'll be uh, corrected here soon. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make comment? Roll call vote, please, ma'am. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Henke? Bill 9146 passes and becomes Ordinance 8187, 8187. Bill 9147. An ordinance authorizing an appropriation of $10,000 from the General Revenue Fund to account 4059 election expense for the purpose of funding additional election expenses. I'll make a motion for a second reading. That is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion? All in favor of second reading, aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. Ordinance authorizing an appropriation of $10,000 from the General Revenue Fund to account 4059 election expenses for the purpose of funding additional election expenses. Ms. Pagano makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Hinkey. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Puda? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. For a third, <laughs> third time. time. An ordinance authorizing the appropriation of $10,000 from the General Revenue Fund to account 4059 election expense for the purpose of funding additional election expenses. Prior to a final vote being taken on this topic, is there anyone, or this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? So if you'd be so kind as to state your name and address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Thank you. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm here to speak about this $10,000 in additional, addition to the 35,000 I understand that was. Uh, Mr. Shildroth, this concerns you too, please. Could you, do you have to leave? If you proceed with your comments, sir. I, I don't like rudeness, okay? Thank you. Um, Just proceed with your comment, please. Okay, my comment is that on August 17th, on August 10th, I mean, when this was proposed to put this on the ballot, I asked how much it was going to cost, 8000 10000 25000 whatever. Nobody knew. Okay, then it came up that it was going to be 35000 All of a sudden, we're at a $10,000 shortfall. Well, I, I had asked the council, you, Mr. Egan, and, and the council, if they could consider putting this on the April election of next year. And I was told by the city council that this, that, that Florissant has no elections in 2016. Am I correct? I never told you that. Mr. Lee? Well, thank you very much. And will you advise him, uh, Mr. Lee, to speak for you because you didn't have the knowledge because you passed it down to Mr. Lee, if that's, not, if that's the way I recall. Anyway. Uh, if we would have put pro, uh, either postponed this to April next year, we could have put two items on the ballot. Because what people don't understand this evening is that next year we're having another special election, which will be probably $44,000, just like this one was. And that makes $88,000 total. That's a lot of money for just two separate elections. Now maybe we could have put the other, the, this ballot, for uh, the titling of the vehicles, the getting the, f the money from the vehicles on November's ballot, or we could have put November's Prop S on April's ballot, one or the other, and saved, uh, saved us and me, the si yourselves, the city, at an expense of $44,000, or 45000 because you're seeking 10000 So. That's all I have to say. I think that, that uh, and I think it was really rude of Mr. Shildroth since he was on Prop S committee that he got, that he removed himself from the dais for the third time this evening when I get up to speak. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Egan. Mr. Lee. Mr. O'Donnell, I would encourage you to contact the Board of Election Commission. We don't know what they're going to charge us until they do their little thing. I am on record, I contacted him, I felt that it was 
it was unnecessary to have the number of polling places that we had, but that's something we have no control over. We don't know until after it's over. We still haven't gotten our final bill. So I would encourage you to get in touch with the Board of Election Commission and ask them to look into it because they base it on the number of polling places and their expense that they had. I don't think any one of us up here felt that we needed the number of polling places that we had for a, for a, a single election. But please take that up with them. I would encourage you to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. That being... I appreciate your comments, Mr. O'Donnell. Clerk, if you will be so kind as to poll the council on this bill. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bill 9147 passes and becomes bill ordinance number 8188-8188. Bill 9148. An ordinance authorizing an appropriation of $5,500 from the general revenue fund to account 5626 utilities Coke Aquatic Center for year end balancing. Mr. Sayan makes a motion for a second reading and is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Is there any discussion? All in favor of second reading, aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time, ma'am. Ordinance authorizing an appropriation of $5,500 from the General Revenue Fund to account 5626 Utilities Coke Aquatic Center for year and balancing. Ms. Pagano makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? A roll call vote, please, for a third reading. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. An ordinance authorizing an appropriation of 5500 from the General Revenue Fund to account number 5626 Utilities Coke Aquatic Center for year and balancing. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, will you please pull the council? Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Bill number 9148 passes and becomes ordinance 8189-8189. Bill 9149. An ordinance amending Chapter 125.065A by deleting selected job classifications and adding a new job classification as necessary. Mr. Hinkey makes a motion for a second reading that is seconded by myself. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. An ordinance amending Chapter 125.065A by deleting selected job classifications and adding a new job classification is necessary. Mr. Sayan makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a ro roll call vote, please, for a third reading. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sayan? Yes. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shuldroff? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Third time. An ordinance amending Chapter 125.065A by deleting selected job classifications and adding a new job classifications as necessary. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please poll the council. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Yes. Okay. Lee? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shoulder? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bill number 9149 passes and becomes ordinance 
8190-8190. Next item on the agenda, item number 11. Please make note that due to the holiday, the city council meeting scheduled for the 28th of December will be canceled. I will take that motion and that is, I'll make the motion seconded by Mr. Hinkey. Any discussion on the cancellation? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Council announcements. Mr. Hankey, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm gonna start out with this, just two things. The holiday season's upon us, Thanksgiving's this week. There's a lot of negativity in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I am truly thankful for, obviously friends, family, things, but the wonderful city that I live in, and I see that the people that are taking care of it, Social media has done a lot to tear down the fabric of our society. I think we're very thankful for many things that we have. I would just wish that people would take a little bit of time out, be a little more thoughtful in what they're thankful for before they set out the tweets or the emails or whatever it is that they're putting out there uh, that the fellow citizens within our community. Also, a shout out since it is Thanksgiving and Mr. <coughs> Jones is not here this evening. He's excused. It's a shout out for team. We're going to be having Thanksgiving here. Most of us have plenty, much to be thankful for. Don't forget team at this time of year for the people that don't have plenty. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hankey. Mr. Lee. Yeah, I just want to take the opportunity to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and also to remember our servicemen and women that are not going to be home for Thanksgiving, being with their families, uh, especially this time of the year. I also want to just make a real brief comment. This is my 13th budget. Some of them are more contentious than others. Some of them have been very spirited, but I would like to thank everybody, the administration and the council. I think we handled it well, respectful with each other. We didn't agree on everything, but uh, I think it went really well, and I, I just really appreciate that. Um, we've had others that didn't go as well, but this was a good, this was a good year, so thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Lee. Mr. Caputa, you're up. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yes, I would like to wish um, Ward 4 and everybody and the citizens of Florissant a uh, happy Thanksgiving coming up Thursday. It's a good time to spend with your family. Make sure you give everybody a hug and a kiss and tell them that you love your family. This is a time to do it, especially to be thankful for your family. Also, I'd like to remind people in the morning, starting their cars up, it's going to start getting cold in the morning. It already is. Make sure you, st if you're going to start your cars, make sure you stay in there with them. Cars that, that thefts are going to be on the rise of vehicles of people start starting them and leave them in their driveway unattended. You get This is the time of the year it's going to happen. It happens all over the St. Louis metropolitan area. So let's make Florida in a safer spot and keep our vehicles locked and not started. If you are going to be started, make sure you're with them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caputa. I would like to state that uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I will be uh, patrolling that night. I, I don't have turkey night off. But the night before Thanksgiving, I will be at Guns and Hoses uh, watching my daughter fight out of the red corner, unfortunately. <laughs> she did get a fight, and she will be fighting. Uh, Kirsten Ellerbush will be fighting, but she will be fighting on behalf of the red corner just because of the way the... Um, the way that the matchups went this year, so for one one fight, I will be rooting for the firefighters. Uh, there still are tickets available, folks. Uh, unfortunately, I've sold all 220 of mine, so if you uh, call the hotline on the website, they can still make sure you get tickets. Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I'm uh, very proud to serve at the uh, head of a very dedicated administration. I uh, worked very hard on this budget. I'm also proud of this force and city council. And there are times that I wish I did have puppets because <laughs> this council is a very hard working council. And uh, it's very, it, it, they take us to task, they make us do our homework, and they do not deserve the insects, insults that were directed at them tonight. They do deserve a lot of praise, a lot of thanks. Uh, and I want to just tell you, the citizens, that you guys are very lucky. You have a very hardworking council. They uh, challenge this administration each and every day. Uh, and uh, that's a fact. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now it is the season. And uh, 
we have a lot of seasonal things going on. We have the Christmas house tour uh, Sunday uh, after Thanksgiving. That's this Sunday on, on the 29th from 2 to 6. Uh, that's really a very interesting tour. It's going to have uh, Dooley's Florist and Cordy's Framing, uh, Hair Express, Historic Florissant, or, or the, the places where you can get the tickets are $12. And there's going to be a lot of interesting places, and there'll be refreshments at each place. We have uh, Christmas in Old Town on Sunday, Saturday, December 5th, from 2 to 5, followed by the Christmas tree lighting. And that same night, we'll have the uh, 27th, I can't believe I started this thing, 27th Project Liftoff uh, for the Dare Age children from 5th to 8th grade at our uh, Egan Center. They'll have the, the whole theater, the whole center except for the theater. And it's going to be a blast, like it always is. Then on uh, Saturday, December 19th at the Nature Lodge, we're going to have Visit with Santa from 9 to 10, 30. Um, and then uh, we'll have Winter Break Camp at Egan Center. It's kind of like a summer camp, but it's for the Christmas vacation so that parents have a place to, have to keep their kids occupied, and it'll be a lot of fun for them. Don't forget, residence cards runs out on December 31st, so... Uh, be sure and renew your resident card, especially if you're uh, one of the frequent flyers at the weight room and so forth, swim pool. And we have a sharing and caring food drive going from November 27th to December 17th. And we'll have barrels at City Hall. We'll also have them at Egan and at JFK to collect uh, food. Uh, and we're also going to have uh, food. We have Christmas house decorating contest. Uh, that's free to Florissant residents. Uh, and uh, you can register beginning November 23rd, and you can contact the uh, City Hall or one of the Civic Centers for more information. Uh, and then we also so have the Youth Advisory Commission will do that judging. And uh, Snowman Building Contest, you do not need a building permit for this. <laughs> this will be uh, for uh, age 15 and under, <coughs> and you can find out about that at the JFK Center. And holiday skating sessions, uh, we're going to have daytime skating from 2 to 4 on the November 27th, December 21, 22, 23, 28, 29, 30, January 18th, February 15th. December 31 is a free skate, Resident Appreciation Day, as is Martin Luther King Day and also President's Day. If you have, uh, want to process some letters to Santa, so they can get an answer from Santa. That can also be done through JFK. And happy holidays and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. All right, thank you, Your Honor. We have a very good crowd in the audience tonight. I want to thank you all for showing tonight and showing interest in your city. The next meeting of the Florissant City Council will be December 14th, 2015, which will be the annual day that we wear our holiday tie. Mr. Cyan makes a motion for adjournment. That is seconded by Mr. Lee, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the council shall stand adjourned. Good night, all.